Oh, oh yeah, this is the you're, I don't, okay. Why but are you're, you touching you're running? Car? You're running? I'm running? Yeah. Running for what? Join U.S. corrupt cops on YouTube to uncover cases where corrupt officers abuse their authority. Watch as justice prevails in two cases corrupt cops use power to cuff man and gets owned. Subscribe, like, and share to demand accountability. If you like this video, press 1. Axel describes an encounter with a New Mexico State Police officer who parked his patrol car in the middle of an apartment parking lot and left it unattended. Axel, having just had a pre-workout drink, tried to leave by maneuvering around the patrol car as he was backing out. However, the officer and another person returned, making it difficult for Axel to leave. Axel says he was moving slowly but had to get close to the officer, who instead of moving gave him a dirty look. In response, Axel told the officer not to stare at him since they were blocking the lot. The trooper then told Axel to get out of his car, but he refused and drove off, leading to the officer pursuing and eventually pulling him over. So do you tell the judge what your badge number is when they ask you? It's going to be all, it's all on camera. What's your, I, I need to know who I'm talking to. I just told you. What's your, I'm. what's your identification number, sir? Driver, I'm going to ask you one more time. Roll down your window. It's rolled down. Uh, for the record, it is rolled down for the for the judge, for the witness, for the fucking guy. I can't see into your car. I don't know. If it's, they're not even tinted windows, bro. You don't need to see in my car. Yeah. You don't need to see in my car. My hands are here. You have no business to see in my car. Driver, I'm not gonna. I'm You're gonna, gonna break my window? I will, and if you don't want to do my lawful command, I'm. You're gonna break my window because it's it's I'm, down. Driver, you have to understand. I was here on a call. And I'm leaving. Yeah, but you were uh, you could. All I did was leave. You could. I tried to back two out. Minutes. Two minutes. I was in the house. I don't know if you see me looking. I was watching your car. It was behind my car some more. You moved a little bit more. I waited a little bit. Then I seen you walk off somewhere else. I'm like, he's probably going to be doing something else. I tried to back out. You and the other motherfucker looking at me like I'm doing something wrong. He was a victim. I didn't do... Okay, I have nothing to do with listen your call. To if you nothing to, to do with his call. Yeah. If you break my window, I guess that's on you and I'll go to jail. I guess you're gonna break my window and take me to jail. Right if now? you're gonna break my window and take driver? me to jail, then I guess that's what you're gonna do. Because I didn't break the law. You are right now because I'm doing giving you a, a failure point? to identify. Failure to identify is a secondary charge, sir. Who said? Okay. You so what am I breaking the law on? Not rolling down my window, sir. Yeah. Sir. It's a it's a safety violation. Safety. Go do a different job. You have a gun. My hands are here. Did I do with my gun out, driver? Well, you're, what are you scared about? You're saying it's a safety violation. My hands are here. What are you worried about? My window's down for the judge, for the courts, for the for the lawyers, for everyone. District Attorney's Office. I work, I go to, I, oh goodness. It seems the officer stopped Axel out of contempt for authority as he hadn't violated any traffic laws. While Pennsylvania v. Mims does permit an officer to request a driver to exit the vehicle during a lawful traffic stop, this situation doesn't appear to meet that criteria. Shortly after, the officer concedes that Axel hasn't committed any offense, rendering his demand for the window to be rolled down and for identification unjustified. You're gonna break my window and, and arrest me? For one, whenever I walked out, driver, and it's on camera, when I walked out, you were not, you were still in your parking spot, okay? I was standing talking to the victim right by my unit. I don't deny that, yeah. I was in the car about to back out. What? Okay. About to back out in the parking lot, and I was just trying to move out of the way. I didn't think you guys were going to get that close. I was just going to try to squeeze. Okay. I didn't know I was that close to you guys. I really didn't. Then I seen you guys looking at me, I'm like, yo, I'm, no, I'm in okay. just trying to leave. And to me, because of your attitude, listen, man, that was very, very, like, I could have taken that as an assault. The officer now asserts that he could have interpreted Axel's maneuver of backing out of a parking space, which he was blocking, as an assault. Not that he actually perceived it as an assault, but that he could have construed it as such, which appears to be an acknowledgement of attempting to manipulate a charge to assert his authority. I don't think you can. I know the law. I'm not going to be a dick with you, bro. bro I, under, I respect it, police. I'm ex-military, bro, ex-law enforcement. I worked at the prison. I worked at the CO for two and a half years, bro, yeah, uh, ex-army infantry. 22, my last year. Ex-Army Infantry, bro, I understand how cops, I have no issue with cops, bro, but I know my love. I'm not going to be dogged okay, because I'm in a parking lot, bro. Who is your, who's your, oh, your uh, commanding officer then? I'm ex, I'm, 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 I'm out, bro. I've been out for fucking two years. Army active for two years infantry, army active, okay, then man. I did fucking six years in the National Guard Reserves over here. But you have to understand. And I did three, two years in the fucking correctional, hey, New Mexico listen. correctional, I'm, I, I don't like being f***ed with, bro. That's I, the only okay, thing. I respect okay, police officers. Listen, I'm not even trying to f*** with you. You did because you told me to get out for no reason, because bro. Me attitude, I don't I, in the cop's own words. Axel was told to get out of his vehicle because of his attitude. 
gonna get out for no reason, bro. Me attitude, I, I said, hey, I was like, hey, man, I'm in a parking lot. I'm just trying to like leave. That, bro. And it's all all I said was, Fuck you, bro, because you told me to get out. I don't respect that. Yo. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm good. I was trying to say 22 my last. Hello, Kenny. Hello? Hey. I I'm okay. Advise them I'm okay and they can 22. Let's just talk real quick. I'm not. Do you want me to turn off the car or what? If you don't mind, just step out, man. I'm not. I'm not gonna identify you. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna identify Mine, you. Mine for what? For just, what crime? Just so I know. What, no for crime. what crime? There's no crime. And you're not gonna identify. I'll, I'll, I'll give. I'll give you my first name as a respect, but you're not gonna tell me who's gonna identify I'm me. I'm not telling you. I'm asking you. You can. You can ask me. You can ask me all you want. You can ask me all you want. Do you want me to turn off the car? Yes, please. You can ask me anything you want, but you don't tell me anything unless I break the law. You have no authority over me. You Unless I break the law, I have you have no authority. This is a consensual hey, conversation. Listen, you stop me I'm as a. Talking, I'm talking to you. I respect okay? you as a police officer. Well, but then you're not let me talk. But don't disrespect me as a human, bro. You are you're disrespecting me as an officer. I'm trying of to the just law, leave. Okay? I'm just trying to just get out of my place. I was trying to okay, leave. Okay, let me ask you this then. Of course. If, if you're trying to, I don't. I just don't want to. I just want to step like just like this close because I just don't like being within like. I don't want you to put your hands on me. That's all I'm saying. If you keep it up, it's good. I, I, I listen, stepped bro. out. Listen, bro. I stepped out. I got out of the car. You have to understand, okay? I'm trying to have a good conversation with you and you keep interrupting me. I don't want to have any conversation with you, officer. I want to go about my day. I didn't break the law. This is a consensus. This should be you a consensus. You almost hit me. I was, you didn't know. I didn't almost hit you. Maybe the other guy, I was close today. It's all, if it's all on video, it's all on video. We can it's take that video. to court. If you want to arrest me and break my window for breaking the law, I, I'm not going to fight you. You can tase me. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Why would I want to tase you, man? Because I'm, you wouldn't be able to take me in a fight, guaranteed. Bottom line, you could tase me. You could do whatever the f*** you want. Is I, that a threat? It's not a threat. If you want to take me to jail for, for f***ing trying to get out of why, my goddamn thing. Okay, but why are you sizing me up then? I size You're sizing me up. up. I size everybody up, especially when a grown man with a police or a gun and a badge and tells me to step out of my vehicle in my fucking place where I live. But I'm trying to get out of my apartment complex. I didn't say anything to you. I didn't say get the fuck out of the way or fucking move. I, I just I was like, yo, y'all are looking at me while I'm backing out. Y'all are in a parking y'all in the parking spot. Okay, let me ask you this, bro. Okay. Why did you tell me to get uh, out? Because you were upset that I gave you attitude, correct? Well, let me ask you this, okay? Let me ask you if I was d d dealing with you on a crime, okay? If I was dealing with you on a crime and I'm talking to you because you're my victim and someone did what you did. Back out when they're trying to leave? I, 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 oh, no, not back. Just back out, but almost hit you. I didn't I, I didn't know I was that close. I was oh, trying no, to be. No, you're I not answering my question. You're I, not I don't answering need to answer question. your question. I'm sorry. No, how, can, would you, how would you feel? I wouldn't go be a. I wouldn't go abuse my power and say, get the fuck out of the car. I want to identify you. Chase me down the street. Like, I, didn't, I didn't break the law. Bro, I didn't. I could have been gone a long time. Hey, I wasn't going to run. Talk. I wasn't going to run. I wasn't going to go get chased down and do a bunch of shit. I was gonna then stop why did here. You go all the way around. Cause you know what? I, I'm like, I don't. I, I eventually wanted to. F I'm like, you know what? I don't need to. F I don't have to stop to talk to you. Cut me off. You blocked me. It's whatever you want to do. No fucking problem with that. I didn't break the fucking law, dude. I don't. Oh, yeah, this is a. You're, I don't. Okay, why but are you're, you touching you're running. Car? You're running. I'm running. Yeah. Running for what? Then why for breaking the law. So I can't. I can't. There's no freedom of movement in America. <laughs> I can't drive right. the fucking parking lot of my what apartment complex. You said you were gonna give me your first name. I said maybe I changed my mind. Am I? Is it against the law? Yeah, it is. Because I'm asking you. Take me to jail. Oh, Failure yeah. to identify as a secondary charge unless you commit me with a charge no, right I'm, now. I'm going to actually take you to jail for concealing identity, which... And oh, you're that's a secondary know. charge. And you then, won't be released uh, until we can identify Then that's you. fine. Then I'll get a nice chunk. I'll go to jail. I will... F my job will be fine with it. I, they'll understand. I have it all on video. Mm -hmm. No worries. I'll get a nice little chunk of change from the state because it's a violation of my fucking rights. If How you want to take me to jail, if you arrest me right now for failure to identify on a secondary charge, sir, that is against well, the Fourth Amendment, sir. I, oh, <laughs> okay, you almost hit me. In this scenario, the narrator describes a situation where a police officer is escalating their accusations against someone named Axel. Initially, there was no apparent crime, but the officer accused Axel of having a bad attitude. Then the accusations escalated to Axel supposedly running from the officer, and now the officer is suggesting that Axel assaulted him. The narrator suspects that the officer is exaggerating the situation, as indicated by the officer's expression and behavior. Despite the increasing severity of the accusations, the officer has not yet arrested Axel, 
and is waiting for a supervisor to arrive, leading the narrator to doubt the legitimacy of the accusations. Is it, you, uh, you almost <laughs> judge my car. whenever this is being released for oh, fucking talking evidence. To a victim. <laughs> That's then, there's evidence on that body cam. I, um, I assaulted this officer. If I would have assaulted you, I would have been tased. I would have been tased and handcuffed and beaten the f I down if I touched you. Can you not touch my property, sir? Can you get your hand off my private property, sir? Please. Can I go touch? Uh, that's actually my car. I pay for. Can you please get your hand off my car, dude? Oh, you are a piece of work. Can you please? You can look, my, bro. I got out of the car. Can you get your hand? Is that a problem? I'm asking. I'm trying to get you to cooperate with me, bro. I did. I not get out of the car and turn it off and try to be cool you with you? You are not trying. You, you look at how you are. Your body language. You, the I don't have to. Voice. I don't have to be nice to you. You're a public servant. You work for the public. When I am the public. Me, I didn't. Oh, okay. Now look at that. Perfect. First, it was a lie. First, I assaulted this officer. Now it's almost assault. No, I get your fucking hand off my property, officer. When you assault, get me? your fucking hand off my property, please. Okay. Is that? Is that? You just don't. You just have an ego, right? No, I don't. I don't. You I, just want to identify me because I, I almost... I, I want to know who I'm talking to. You're talking to a good citizen who doesn't like to be f***ed with. A good citizen doesn't act this way. A good citizen doesn't like to be f***ed with. Oh, no. A good citizen doesn't... I didn't break the law. You did. You almost hit me. That, okay, then arrest me. If I broke the law, then arrest me, yeah, officer. I felt a That's why I was like, hey, If I, I broke... The, officer, if I broke the law, then, I, then arrest me, please. Or please get your hand off my car. Do whatever you need to do and let me be on my way. I, I will if you just cooperate with me, okay? I don't need to cooperate with you unless I've broken the law. You did. Then take me to jail. Uh, look at the then back. arrest me, officer, you, you so I can to... get a nice thirty thousand dollar check of change in my bank account from the office. I don't give a. F you're gonna violate me. He's gonna violate my rights, and I'm gonna get paid out because he violated my rights. What's your name again, officer? What? Oh, it'll be on the arrest paper if I arrest you. Okay. I mean, you don't want to stay. It's been. It's okay. You want to touch my? You know. You know that's. The, you think it's gonna make me upset. No. It's okay. You want to do that because you think you have some kind of power. You know you fucked up. You know I didn't break the fucking law. You ain't gonna do anything I didn't, about how did it. I mess up? You just, you have, I have all day, bro. I'm off today. My gym doesn't close till mid. I'm going to the gym. My gym is, is open all night. I don't give a f I can ha I have full battery, boss. Um, so we can sit here all day. All you want to do, uh, you want to go about your day, okay? Uh, and you want to be, go and do I don't thing. want you stepping I closer to me, sir. <laughs> you are making this very difficult. Hey, I just don't like people telling me to get the f out of my car for no goddamn fucking reason. You I'm a man, bro. Me. I'm a man. A man doesn't talk to another man. Like I don't know. A man doesn't try to use that badge and gun to fucking get what if, he wants because he's a little fucking... No, you're ahead, a fucking tyrant. A tyrant. You're a tyrant, sir. How am I a tyrant? You want to enforce your little... You're a fucking egotistical asshole state police officer. I've had plenty of cops where I've been more of a dickhead to them and they're like, okay, mm -hmm. have a good day. You have nothing with so me. So you think I'm going to back down because you... You're not... You, you, yes, like, you're not going to back down because you have an ego. I didn't break the law. You should not be contacting me. You almost me. hit me with your car. I didn't break the law. You shouldn't be contacting me. You just said it. You have nothing. You, know, you just you don't want to back down. It's an car. ego. That, that is, yeah, for, I didn't almost hit you with your car. That is my, my car. car. I almost tapped. My I didn't car. even get close to you. I, 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 the other fucking dude you were dealing with was like three, that, to about a three and a half. Crime was, it, 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 nothing it, to do it with me. Loca okay, so a crime, a crime control, op control op uh, I don't even know what I'm saying, dude. I know you're not. You got me so fucking like ridiculous. I don't even know what the fuck you're trying to like. Your logic is bullshit. You have no crime, articulate a crime. There's your backup, they're gonna come, f are you gonna slam me and arrest no. me and arrest what? I'm sure there's you. cameras all around here. Those people have been watching since you're, I've been recording, you're still putting your hand on me like a little bitch cop because you want to be an asshole, dude. Like, I got out of the car for you, I rolled down my window, I didn't have to, I could have been sitting in there with a dick and then fucking, but you threatened to break my window and arrest me. Well, when you didn't roll your window down, yes. It was down and it's for the, it's, not, it's, it's for all of it. Car, you can see inside the car without the, I'm looking at it right now. I can see with no window down, I can see all of it. You're just a fucking liar, bro. No, I'm not you're a liar. just a No, I'm not. Officer safety. Yeah, and plus. If you're scared, get a different job. I'm not scared. You're in a bulletproof vest with weapons, man. I didn't do anything I'm wrong not to you. I'm afraid of you. I've been awesome. Is he a sergeant? Yeah. Sergeant. Awesome. Thank you, sergeant. Thank you, Sergeant. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't broken the law. Nothing. He has no issue, but he's upset because I... I he said I almost assaulted him. He's foolish, Sergeant. He's going to violate my rights, Sergeant. He threatened to take me to jail because I wouldn't roll down my window, Sergeant. Awesome. Get his story first, Sergeant. Get his story first, Sergeant. Go ahead. I'll be the first to admit, and even Axel admits it himself, that he could have remained calmer during this encounter. However, his anger seems justified thus far. Finally, Sergeant Jay Wright arrives on the scene, but instead of attempting to calm down the situation, he escalates it further by engaging in an argument with Axel and hurling insults without ever truly listening to what happened. How you doing, officer?
I almost, I almost hit him. I assaulted him. Apparently, I have it all on video. I almost assaulted him. That's all. Yeah, that's awesome. He can go and can tell that I almost assaulted him. Officer, I don't like being told, especially when I have nothing. You have no authority over me until I violate the law. I didn't break the law in one instance, officer. We're here right now, we're gonna deal with it. Okay, you need to relax. Okay. I can be a little upset about this. I don't have to be perfectly content. Are you? Is that recording? Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. That's, I'm glad that's recording because I need this to be documented because this guy's about to violate my rights. He has an ego. Let's talk. Where do you want to talk at? In front of all the cameras would be fantastic. I'm not. Right, we could I have nothing about my car. I'll stand right here if that's fine with you. I don't know why we gotta go way over there. I'll just get my vehicles back there. That's all, and my cameras in there. You're gonna put me in the vehicle, so Did I do anything wrong? Did I break the law? I just want to talk to you. This guy told us. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You need to breathe. I'm ex-military, hey, ex-law enforcement. Look, I don't look, like bro, being attacked I don't like care. this. I know who you are, dude. Who am I? I've seen you around. Who am I? I've seen you around. I've never met look, you in my life, Jay. Huh? I smoke is okay. illegal. I smoke in my apartment. Look high as hell right now. That's besides the point. I smoke okay, in my so apartment. Let's chill out. Let's it doesn't chill out. matter. Let's is it illegal to smoke? Sergeant Jay Wright. Okay, hang on. Is it illegal let's, to smoke? Let's take a deep breath. Is it illegal to smoke? Let's. Is it illegal? Are you stepping? Why are you well, coming up on me? Well, it's illegal to smoke and operate. I, but I have. But you have proof on. that I was doing that because Bro. I smell like. Bro, can we talk? Or are you just gonna keep talking over me? I want to know if I've broken the law. Okay, that's what I'm trying to figure out. If I, okay. if I if I if I haven't broken the law, I want this to be a no more well, conversation. Can I get your this side is of the not story? this is not a consensual conversation at this point. I do not want to be talking to any of I you. I hope you put this on Facebook. And I don't want to. I'm not this. This is for you're me. Gonna, you're going to show everybody how stupid you really this are. This is for me for the I'm courts, man. Right I'm not, I don't put okay. this on Facebook. I'm not one of those guys who so goes and audits people. Are you going to talk? Or are you going to keep talking over me? What is because it to talk you about? Sound like a right now. I don't care, okay. Sergeant. Good for you, Sergeant J. Wright. I'm a dick. Right I don't give a f what any of y'all think of me. Ex-military, infantry. Okay. I don't respect Gestapo people telling me to get the f out of my car for no reason because he got his feelings well, hurt. Listen, That's why I'm upset. Listen, no issue, well, with, you. No issue with, with you. No issue with you. I have an issue with him, and he wants to be a little dick telling me he's going to break listen, my window. Listen, that was an Let's accident. Go okay? Let's go over here. You can keep filming. I don't give a crap. I just don't want to be bro. touched by you guys. I don't want... Well, I've been f***ed over by I police. don't want to touch you. Trust Please me. Please don't f***ing put me in your office. Try to arrest me and all this shit. You're going to search bro, my if car? If I wanted you in handcuffs, you'd be in freaking handcuffs right now. Are you going right to search my car? You're going to go look in my... I consent to no searches and seizures. Let's go over here. He's not going to search your vehicle, bro. I consent to no searches and seizures. If he searches your vehicle, you can sue us, all right? Let's go over here. He, she tried Let's to, go over here. What are you doing right now? I'm telling you to walk over here. You're are you telling me or asking me? No, I'm telling you. Is that a lot? What is that? If I don't, is that going to go take me to jail? Holy shit, bro. How you high are hit you me? right now? You're going to hit me? Are you Are you upset, officer, because I'm no, asking I'm questions? No, I'm not upset. I don't get upset over dip like you. Why are you putting your hand in my okay? face? If I were to do that to you, you would not like that. Okay, look. Are we going to talk or no? We're talking. All right. Are what you do you want to say? Are you going to charge him with, with assault and arrest him? Okay, cool. So turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Okay, turn around. Turn around. Turn around. The video cuts off as the officer stops recording while putting him in handcuffs after the officers huddled together. They decided not to charge him and let him go. Yo, that was fucking, that was pretty crazy. So they fucking let me go. They didn't arrest me, those motherfuckers. They knew they didn't have shit. They told me I was under arrest. They put me in fucking handcuffs. The officer, look, there's a fucking handcuff, right? The fucking handcuffs marks are still there, holy shit. So the motherfucker told me I was under arrest. You guys heard it on the video. They got my hand and the officer ended my video in my fucking hand. And then they tried to tell me, oh, we're just gonna be cool and talk to you and talk to you a little bit while I was in handcuffs. And then uh, they're like, oh, you know, we don't, we could take you to jail, but we're just gonna be cool. We just don't want you. We're not gonna take you to jail. Blah, 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 blah. They tried to get me an ID. I told them my fucking name. I told them my name. I had to because I thought I was going to jail. They, they arrested me. I was like, these people got me. But um, they let me go and they're bitches. So fuck up. We're working on getting access to the body cam footage and identifying the other officers once we have the footage. Was she in there? Was she in there? Was she in there? Oh my God, yes, she was. Next video, the scenario outlines a train accident in Colorado involving a police car stopped on the tracks, resulting in severe injuries to a woman in police custody. The focus is on the legal concept of qualified immunity, which shields government officials from civil lawsuits unless they violate clearly established constitutional rights. The narrator questions the applicability of qualified immunity in this case, arguing that the officer's actions should be considered a violation of civil rights. However, proving liability under Section 1983 requires showing intentional conduct rather than mere negligence or incompetence. The narrator suggests reviewing past case law in the jurisdiction, particularly within the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, to develop a theory of liability. The discussion emphasizes the significance of new footage in understanding the incident.
she could have because when I was behind her, she was driving slow enough. Yeah. So she could have tossed something, but I lit her Toss up. Tossed it out the window? She could have out that window, but who is, is that Hart? Who no, is that? that's a... Uh, Was she in there? Was she in there? Oh my god, yes she was! Was she in there? Was she in there? She was in there! Oh f***. Oh f***. Dispatch Platte, my man 12 Star Medical, please. My car's just been hit by the train. Copy. Mother. Oh my God. Let's go over there. In section 1983, there exists a legal doctrine known as the state created danger theory. Essentially, this doctrine provides a means for a plaintiff to establish liability under section 1983 for a violation of civil rights, even if the government did not directly cause the harm or theoretically adopted it. This theory has indeed been recognized in the Tenth Circuit. So, to prove a case under this theory, the plaintiff must demonstrate several key points. Firstly, they must show that the state actor in question either created the danger or heightened the plaintiff's vulnerability to it. Secondly, the plaintiff must belong to a specific and identifiable group. Thirdly, the defendant's actions must have placed the plaintiff at significant risk of immediate and serious harm. Fourthly, this risk must have been obvious or known. Fifthly, the defendants must have acted recklessly, disregarding the known risk. Finally, when taken as a whole, the conduct must be deemed conscience shocking. This legal framework was outlined in the case a state of right versus Rodriguez in the Tenth Circuit in 2016. To defeat qualified immunity, however, one must still find a prior case with a similar fact pattern. A review of Tenth Circuit case law reveals numerous instances where the state-created danger doctrine has been successfully applied. The common thread in these cases is that the victims were either unable to fend for themselves or had their freedoms curtailed by state actors. This parallels the standard applied to correctional officers responsible for inmate care. For instance, an arrestee may be incapable of acting on their own behalf, much like inmates locked in cells during a prison fire. While there are other potential arguments and theories for liability, the state-created danger doctrine is often overlooked. In my opinion, it's a fitting framework for our circumstances. The footage clearly demonstrates that the arresting officer placed the victim in harm's way, rendering her unable to help herself. The risk posed was evident from the officer's decision to park on train tracks, especially considering the frequent train activity in the area. If this woman is denied justice due to qualified immunity, it highlights the need to reevaluate the concept, which serves no legitimate purpose and epitomizes judicial activism. On June 29, 2023, Andrew Sadie was having lunch at a cafe when his wife told him that his truck had apparently hit a building owned by Hoyless Sutton. Mr. Sadie met with Mr. Sutton, acknowledged the minor damage, and offered to fix it himself or pay for professional repairs. They reached an agreement, sealed it with a handshake, and went their separate ways. Later, Chief of Police Zach Weber and Sergeant Rob Noon approached Mr. Sadie asked for his ID and documents, and recorded the events on their body cameras. So here's the idea, or here's what's going on. We do have a law that says you do have to identify yourself. So if you do not identify yourself, you will be going to jail. I'll be going to jail? You're going to kidnap me? What crime did I commit? Right now, failure to identify yourself. So what do you need my ID for? What is the crime because I you, committed? Because you were involved in an accident. I'm not saying you committed a crime right now. But because you're... Why are you shaking, man? 
Are you alright? Are you nervous? No. You're shaking. That makes me kind of nervous, man. You're over there with all these guns and shit all suited up, and you're the one shaking. Are you alright, man? You see what's going on here? You see him shaking? Yep. Are you alright? Do, do you need medical attention? No, I'm good. What I want right now is for you to identify yourself. That's what you want. That's nice. We can want anything we want. You ain't gonna get it. In the video, two cops keep pushing to ID Mr. Stating, even though he didn't do anything wrong, and South Dakota, where it happened, doesn't have laws requiring people to show ID without a valid reason. The officer's actions are all over the place, demanding ID without a good reason, making it clear they're breaking the law from the start. South Dakota's lack of ID laws emphasizes that people there don't have to show ID to cops without a good reason. Despite this, the cops not only ignore the law but also make things worse by forcibly restraining and cuffing Mr. Stating without explaining why. That's what you want. That's nice. If you want anything you want, you ain't gonna get it. Okay. Put your hands I up on the car. I made a deal with that man right there. Put your hands up on the car. I, I, I said, hey, maybe... Put your hands up on the car. Okay? And I worked out with him that I will cover the damages. That has nothing to do That's with you. Fine. Nothing to I do with you. Do, do you report? That's lovely. Hands up. At this point, I wish to remain secure in my person's papers and effects. Sir, I will charge you with assault and kidnapping. I'm not resisting. Why are you both up on me? He's not on you. He's holding your arm. I do not wish for this to happen, gentlemen. You were given a lawful order. No, that's not an order. My wrist is backwards. Come on, man. It's not backwards. It's, it's on the right. It's not backwards. Come on. It's supposed to be like this, so you can't. So I'm supposed to be like this and like break my wrist? Come on. It's not man. broke. No, but you're gonna go try and sit me down in the back of your car like that. You want me to break my wrist when it's I sit down? It's not gonna Come break on. when you sit down. Look at this. Am I even resisting? Is there a need for this, or is it just so that you guys can you... feel better about yourself? Oh yeah, real good. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, you do, huh? You know, there's no crime in this city. There's like murder. There is, rapists. like failing to identify yourself yeah, when you're involved in an accident. Failing to identify as a crime. I want to see the charge for that. What charge is that? What law did I break by failure to identify? Let me see. Is South Dakota a stop an ID state? Not Gentlemen. not stopping an ID. You're involved in an accident. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Show me, show me what law you're saying I'm breaking. You're over here throwing me in a car. The officers have now accused Mr. Stating of being part of an accident. According to the law, it's commonly accepted that for a detention to be warranted, an officer needs to express specific details that create a reasonable suspicion of the suspect's involvement in criminal activity. In this instance, being linked to an accident doesn't constitute a justifiable reasonable suspicion, as it doesn't inherently signify criminal activity. Additionally, Mr. Stating had already addressed the involved party, essentially negating the need for further investigation or due process by law enforcement. Okay, knives on him beside this one? I have all kinds of stuff on my pockets that you are not free to touch, sir. That is my property. Exactly, and you're under arrest. Any other knives? I'm sure I got plenty on me. All right, have a seat. What are you doing with my property? Your property is in the front seat, right next to where you're going to be. Well, it might behoove you to know that there's another small knife in my right pocket. And I really know you were not allowed to reach into my pocket. I'll take the cuffs off and I'll get it myself. It's in your front pocket. You can't reach it anyway. Get in. Do not touch me. Oh, 
Alright, have a seat. I'd rather not. I don't care what you rather do. Get in the car. What is your name? Sergeant Neunfeld. Neunfeld and Weber. What is your first name? Rob. Rob Neunfeld and what Weber? Zach. Zach Weber. No, thank car. you. This is against my will. Does someone fit back here, really? Not very good. Sergeant Noonfeld arrested Mr. Stating without any valid reason, as there was no evidence or probable cause to support the arrest. Chief Weber had already stated that no crime had taken place. This arrest violated Mr. Stating's Fourth Amendment rights, which protect against unjust searches and seizures. The officers eventually realized they were supposed to talk to Mr. Sutton, the owner of the damaged building, instead of wrongfully arresting Mr. Stating. So she sends me that from the apartment they live in. Okay. So I walk over there and I'm looking around the truck and she's walking back up. She said, if I need to test it, I'll test it. What's right, right, what's wrong, what's wrong. I said, okay. Um, and she goes, oh, I was looking for a license plate. She goes, oh, they're on the dash. So I took a picture of the license plate on the dash. So there's no plates anywhere else on the truck. And as I was sitting there, the lady in the white car, she said, can I help you? I'm like, is this yours? Or do you know whose this is? It's my husband's. Why? So he hit my building. I said, it's not a big deal. He just hit it. Just want to figure out what's going on. Well, walk me back up. Right away she said, we didn't, he didn't do that. He's been here forever. Like, when did it happen? I said, oh, 10, 15 minutes ago. She just came to my office. He's been here for a long time. That truck hasn't moved. So I called him up. I said, hey, somebody hit my vehicle. I'm in my office. They're claiming it didn't happen. And it's easier just to get a police report. So if I turn it into insurance, they're going to walk so he comes out right away. Yep, yeah, sorry if I did it. I don't know if I did or didn't, but if I did it, I'll, I'll just fix it, take care of it. I'll be on home. I just put it on a year ago. I'll have him come back over and figure out where it's going to take the patch it. It's not going to be horrible. There's a reason we put that break in there for reasons like this. If we can't, we got to cut it all out. It blends better. Uh, he was like, Yep, no problem, whatever. And I said, Hey, all that's Zach. I said, He's called the cops. They said, Turn into insurance. I need a police report. Yeah, man. Right away. So you didn't make no deal with him that he's going to pay for it? I he said I would have Han come look at it and we can figure out, because I gave him my number. Okay. I said, and figure out what it's going to take to fix it. I said, but I don't know. He goes, I'll fix it. Man, I'm going to have to fix it. I said, if you're, you're going to fix it, we're, you're going to pay to fix it, we're good, but I don't. And then you pulled in and then he got with it. So he didn't identify himself to you either? Well, he said his first name, but I didn't catch it. He kind of moaned through. But that's his wife. She identified herself to me as his wife. He said, that's my husband's pickup. He said, he just got it. He didn't deny doing it. He said, I just got this and it's a big old truck I'm not used to driving I light off. After hearing Mr. Sutton's perspective, it confirms initially that what Mr. Stating claimed was true. Both parties had reached an agreement. Secondly, this narrative should have made them recognize that they had unlawfully arrested Mr. Stating. Lastly, a crucial point to remember is that Mr. Sutton mentioned Mr. Stating had identified himself during their conversation. Although Mr. Stating's mention of his first name was unclear, this aspect will now become relevant. Step out. So Frank, said you have to drop something? Yeah, my phone. Here, I get it for you. 
So the statute that you need to identify yourself for is you hit the building. Is that the law? Yes. Is that a statute? South or is Dakota that law? State Codified Law. It's a statute. It's not law. It says codified law. In what sovereign writ that law? Huh? What sovereign writ that law? State of South Dakota. Law? State of South Dakota is not sovereign. I know. It's a state. That's where you're at. No, I'm in a state of bliss. I'm in a state of being. Okay. I'm in a natural state. All right. So I am not in the state of South Dakota. I am on right. the you land. Can you can that explain you that call. to the judge. All right. I don't need to hear you explain that to the judge. Well, you guys are going to release me and stop wasting my time, or I'm going to charge you for my time. Yep, you tried that once already. It didn't work so well, did it? Oh, you think I tried that? Yes, because I know who you are. Oh, okay. Let's see so how that goes. You can identify yourself. Are you guys going to keep running your extortion racket? Because I've worked out with that man that I will compensate really? any and all damages. And That's I don't funny. need no third party interlopers interfering into my affairs. Because he said you didn't identify yourself. I identified myself to him. Not according to him. Okay. Then he can go to court and we'll have this conversation in court. But I have nothing to do with you two clowns. Just now, Sergeant Noon expressed feeling like Mr. Stating essentially lied when he stated that he didn't identify himself while talking to Mr. Sutton. However, we already know that this wasn't true. Let's replay the footage where Mr. Sutton informed the officers that Mr. Stating did indeed provide his first name. So he didn't identify himself to you either? Well, he said his first name, but I didn't catch it. Please note that this insignificant detail is completely unrelated to the officer's improper investigation. However, it does highlight the extent of Sergeant Noon's tyranny as he attempted to pressure Mr. Stating into believing his error. It's notable that Sergeant Noon shifted his position from unlawfully arresting Mr. Stating to suddenly suggesting that he would be released with a citation for leaving the accident scene. You're going to get a citation for leaving the scene of an accident. Oh, I left while I was here the whole time? Did you? What was I did not you go the in the time? Did you go in the building and tell him that you hit a building? I didn't know I hit the building, sir. Okay. So now we're going to come out here and told you that you did. Yeah, actually someone else came in there and told me that I, I know, did. And then I came, recorded it. And then I came running right out as soon as I was told that I hit someone's building. And I came out to see what was going on and I told the man, hey, if it was me, I'm sorry, I f***ed up. I will gladly fix it. What is it going to cost? I can fix it myself, or if you want to hire your guy to fix it, that's fine. I have no problem compensating damages of anything I've done wrong. I do have a problem with road pirates sitting here trying to extort me and waste my time. So what you want to do? I'd love to be left alone to go about You're my day. You're going to be left alone as soon as we get done with the crash report. Then why are you wasting my time? I'm not wasting your time. You're wasting my time because you won't give us your name so we can write it in the report and get this over with and get you on your way. My name is none of your business. It is. It needs to go in the accident report. It needs to be given to the victim. Okay, I'll go talk to the victim. Though it's quite clear that Mr. Stady didn't flee the accident scene, Let's examine the unjust allegations against him under South Dakota's hit-and-run laws. You're deemed guilty of a misdemeanor if you depart from an accident scene. According to Section 32344 of South Dakota's codified laws, if you're involved in a collision with an unattended vehicle or property, you're legally obligated to reasonably attempt to find the owner of the damaged property. Failing to locate the owner, you can securely attach a note containing your name, vehicle registration, address, and contact information to the struck vehicle in a visible spot. Not finding the owner or leaving a note is considered a Class 2 misdemeanor. Based on this, it's evident that the accusation against Mr. Stady was not just false, but also invalid. He had already located the property owner and reached an agreement, fulfilling his legal duty to contact the other party. This proves once again that no crime was committed. No, you think only government can solve problems. Your daddy didn't teach you right. You didn't know that. Your daddy never taught you that two men. You know why? Because he's he dead. Yeah. Don't ever talk and about my dad. And while he was here, he didn't teach you right, did he? He no, didn't teach you that another I was man. One. He didn't teach you that another man could go talk to another man and okay. solve his problems. You don't need government did intervention. Did I learn that when I was one years old? I don't know. Exactly. But it's brought you to what you are today. No, it isn't. Really? So you can, can 
continue with him with his investigation or you can go to jail. We don't really... It's My not name up is to Good us. Citizen. Last chance. Last opportunity. What are you doing, man? Why are you being so rough with me? I'm not going to go to jail. Oh, you're being so... Dude, why are you throwing me around? Chill, I'll get in the car. Why don't you... Relax. Or, no, you just got to be a tough guy because you got me in handcuffs. You got that uniform on. The state gave you some title. You think you're king. I know. But why don't you calm the f down? At this juncture, the officers had regressed to their initial point, harassing Mr. Stating without cause, perhaps solely because he refused to disclose his identity, which would have infringed upon his rights. Sergeant Noon then feeling agitated, transported Mr. Stating to the station, carelessly leaving some of his belongings on the patrol car's hood during the entire trip. Upon arrival at the station, Mr. Stating was handcuffed to a bench inside, uncertain about the subsequent events for several minutes. You did have a phone? It is in my pocket, guys. So this is the PR, so you can tell your wife and everything to get you on the paperwork. After waiting, Chief Weber approached Mr. Satan, presenting a ticket with his name on it. He was then asked to sign it once the ticket was officially issued. After this, Mr. Satan was permitted to leave. Subsequently, Mr. Satan filed a formal complaint against the Flangero Police Department and both officers. He recounted the entire encounter and mentioned sustaining an injury from the assault. He sought medical attention at the local urgent care and visited a chiropractor in Brookings for the injury. Mr. Satan, who works manually, stated that his rotator cuff was injured, as confirmed by both the local doctor and the Brookings chiropractor. He mentioned waiting for the swelling in his shoulder to subside for an MRI. In an update, Mr. Satan mentioned settling privately with the individual involved, but still having a court appearance at the end of the month. Despite difficulty in finding legal representation, he expressed determination to pursue his own claim and request a trial by jury. On the night of September 22, 2019, after leaving Charlie L's pub in Loveland, Colorado, Preston Sal and his group noticed a guy hurt under a wrecked motorcycle near the parking lot exit. Mr. Sal and his friends quickly stepped in, lifted the motorcycle off the injured man, and someone called 911. Emergency services, including medics, a fire crew, and Loveland Police Department officers, including Officer Paul Ash, showed up with sirens blaring. Officer Ash wasted no time talking to Mr. Sal, asking about what happened and where the crashed motorcycle was. Mr. Sal cooperated and pointed out the nearby parked motorcycle, giving the necessary details. Where is the bike at? The bike's parked down the blue on the one? side. Yeah, the blue one. Despite the applause, Officer Ash maintained his determination to interrogate Mr. Sell. He gestured for him to distance himself from the scene and engage in a private conversation. In response, Mr. Sell defiantly conveyed to Officer Ash that he had no intention of conversing with anyone. He asserted that he wasn't the eyewitness to the incident in the first place. You want to come and talk to me? Uh, I don't know what happened. Well, he pulled the I'm bike off him. To nobody. Really? These guys saw what happened, I didn't. Off Officer Ash confronted Mr. Sell, presenting him with a binary ultimatum, either engage in a conversation with him or swiftly vacate the premises. Faced with this predicament, Mr. Sell invoked his constitutional right to remain silent, opting to plead the fifth and steadfastly refusing to respond to any queries whatsoever. If you're not talking to anybody, you can leave. Well, you can leave. No. You're dismissed. We no. can't leave. You we can't leave. I'm not leaving. Okay, then come and talk to no, me. No, I'm not going to come talk to you. 
Despite Mr. Sell's attempt to explicitly convey to Officer Ash that he was innocent of relocating the motorcycle, the officer remained unconvinced. I'm gonna come talk to you. Police officer, man. Just... I know. Did you pull the bike? Okay, did you pull the bike off him? I'm not gonna come talk to him. Did you pull the bike off him? I did not. Okay. So, okay. so you just told me you did. To do with me. Okay, you're free to leave. Uh, yeah, you're... Absolutely, feel free to depart. Officer Ash engaged in conversation with another onlooker, inquiring about Mr. Sal's first name. Subsequently, Officer Ash returned to Mr. Sal and conveyed a directive compelling him to engage in a discussion about the incident. What's his name? Uh, Preston. Preston what? You got an ID on your boss? I, no, I, I'm gonna no, need an ID no now. ID. Okay. No. One, seven, seven. I got an uncooperative right. witness. Come on over here. Right. I need no, to talk to you. Constitutional right. No. I need I to talk want, to you. I don't want to talk to you. You have to talk to me. I don't want to talk. No, I don't. It's important to emphasize that Officer Ash lacked the legal mandate to compel Mr. South into conversation. In reality, Mr. Sal was fully within his rights to decline discussing any matter and was under no obligation to engage with anyone. No, I don't. Okay, you've no, I, don't. Yourself. I came okay. down here to help them. So, I don't have to talk so to anybody. To go one or two I don't ways. have to talk to anybody. Despite Officer Ash's intimidation tactics, he menacingly warned Mr. Sal that he'd find himself behind bars on charges of obstruction if he dared to remain tight-lipped. Okay, either you're going to sit talk here to and talk to me, no, we'll just have a short no, conversation, no, no. or I'm going to arrest you for obstruction. To, no, you're not I'm not obstructing you. You are. You're right here. Okay. I'm not obstructing that. Under Colorado statutes, an individual engages in obstructing government operations when they deliberately impede or obstruct the duties of a public servant hindering the performance of an official function through the use or threat of violence, force, physical interference, or obstruction. In this context, it is crucial to note that Mr. Sell's actions did not align with the criteria for this legal infringement. Consequently, it is evident that Officer Ash's subsequent actions surpassed the boundaries of legality and justification. Mr. Sell, an innocent bystander who sought to assist a crash victim, found himself ensnared in Officer Ash's unwarranted and unjustifiable actions. Officer Ash, without cause, seized Mr. Sell's arm, needlessly contorting it, and instructed him to place both hands behind his back for an unwarranted placement in handcuffs. Oh, videotape this, Sherry. I'm already Video? doing no. this right here. Turn no. around. You're wrong. Around. My constitutional Turn rights. Around. I don't have to talk to you. Turn I don't around. have to die. I don't have to ID myself. Turn around. He's being a, he's being Turn a around. Fucking Push me. Up. Mr. Sell swiftly counterattacked, accusing Officer Ash of wrongfully detaining him without proper cause. What are you A heated altercation ensued, culminating in a brawl that saw Mr. Sal forcefully slammed to the pavement by Officer Ash, alongside the assistance of Officers DeLima and Schnorr. Their collective effort was ostensibly aimed at ensuring security. This is total fucking bullshit. I gave you plenty of opportunities. No, I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't have to talk to you. I'm gonna sit here. That's my constitutional right. In the course of this brawl, Mr. Sell not only suffered a dislocated shoulder and a fractured collarbone, but also endured a torn rotator cuff. Meanwhile, Mr. Sal bore the brunt with bruises and cuts adorning his forehead. Given the extensive array of injuries inflicted upon Mr. Sal, it's hardly surprising that Officer Ash resorted to unwarranted and excessive force during the arrest. The illegality of the arrest itself further compounds the situation. As Mr. Sal was escorted towards Officer Ash's patrol car, the officer callously conveyed that engaging in conversation was the only requirement. He brazenly asserted that compliance was non-negotiable, insinuating his authoritative power to coerce Mr. Sal into communication, irrespective of the latter's willingness. Take this shit! All you had to do was talk to me. I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't have to talk Doesn't to you. Doesn't matter. I didn't have to talk to you. I don't know what happened. He came over, we saw him down, I came to help him get his fucking bike up. Okay, and that's what I Officer Ash informed Mr. Sal that he needed to have a chat because there were suspicions that Mr. Sell had relocated the motorcycle from the crime scene. Nevertheless, Mr. Sell had firmly asserted from the beginning that he had no part in it. Even after being cuffed, he made sure to reiterate to Officer Ash that he was not involved. 
To compound the situation, Officer Ash added insult to injury by slapping Mr. Sal with charges not only for obstructing justice but also for resisting arrest. This harrowing episode took a sinister twist when Officer Ash's body camera footage exposed a shocking revelation. He was fully cognizant of the undeniable truth that Mr. Sal was entirely innocent in the matter. Here, here. Yeah. I need statements from the guy in the blue plaid shirt. Okay. The guy in the black uh, Eagles thing. Okay. He was the one who moved the bike over there, or was moving yeah, it. the Eagles jersey moved it over there? Yeah. Despite being aware that Mr. Sal would hold no relevance in the crash investigation, Officer Ash was determined to interrogate and subsequently apprehend him. In the body camera footage, Officer Ash openly acknowledged that another bystander had been the one to move the motorcycle. This admission validated Mr. Sal's assertions, proving that he had been unjustly arrested without cause. A paramedic present at the scene requested permission from the police to examine Mr. Sal. Following the examination, the paramedic informed the police that he believed Mr. Sal's shoulder was dislocated and recommended transporting him to the hospital via ambulance. Nope. Since you're in custody, you're going to go with me. Okay? Uh, well, so here's, custody, well, so here, here's what we're going to do, okay? Resist, okay. Perfect. So, 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 so let me explain to you what we're going to do, okay? Uh, yeah. 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 My shoulder's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. 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 The paramedic inquired about removing Mr. Sal's handcuffs, and although the officers initially resisted, they eventually decided to release him from the restraints approximately 20 minutes after he sustained the injury. Mr. Sal was conveyed to the local hospital where physicians conveyed to law enforcement that booking him was impractical due to the severe injuries he sustained. Consequently, Officer Ash issued a citation charging Mr. Sal with obstruction of a peace officer and resisting arrest arising from the altercation with Loveland officers. Post-surgery, during which Mr. Sal underwent shoulder replacement, he endured persistent pain in his shoulder and arm for months. Despite these challenges, on June 22, 2020, the 8th Judicial District Attorney's Office dropped all charges against him. Undeterred, Mr. Sal initiated a legal action against officers Ash, DeLima, Schnoor, and Brian Bartness, contending that they violated his First and Fourth Amendment rights. Additionally, the lawsuit alleged the City of Loveland violated his 14th Amendment right to due process by inadequately training its police officers. Mr. Sal sought financial restitution for his injuries and demanded personal apologies from each involved officer. Shortly thereafter, the City of Loveland publicized that Officer Ash had breached three department policies, exceeding authority, conducting searches and seizures, and employing excessive force. Despite internal affairs finding no probable cause for Mr. Sal's arrest, the city made no mention of disciplinary actions, asserting that any consequences would align with the internal affairs investigation. On January 27, 2021, the excessive force lawsuit from 2020 was settled for $290,000. Curiously, no recorded actions were taken against the involved officers. City Attorney Moses Garcia clarified that the settlement documents explicitly denied guilt on the part of the city and officers. The decision to settle was purportedly based on weighing the cost of litigation against potential outcomes. On February 9, 2023, an 18-year-old college student named Taylor Brown was unfairly hassled and assaulted by more than six police officers. The incident occurred when Brown, who was not a suspect but was helping in a fire investigation, was taken to the normal police department in Illinois. Despite being told she could go home, officers insisted on taking her phone, claiming it was related to an ongoing fire investigation. The officers cited Article 44, Section 443A of the Illinois Criminal Code, which allows the seizure of phones related to criminal activities. However, Brown had no connection to any crime, 
making the seizure unjust and illegal. The officers aggressively demanded her phone, even trying to physically grab it, ignoring her innocence and cooperative role in the investigation. The incident raises concerns about the misuse of authority and violation of legal rights by the involved police officers. It's not a threat. I've asked you several times and you're just no, going to go back and forth. Me a reason as to why my so, so, the fire's going to be under investigation by the but fire that's department. That's not a reason. So, stop, stop, stop. Don't but what does that me. have to do with my device? So, don't interrupt me. The fire is under I've been very calm. Don't ever tell me not to f interrupt you and I've been this calm. So, the phone's going to be seized. So but why is what I'm from. asking you. I'm so asking you, you a reason. So I'm not being rebuttal. I'm asking you a reason. So, if you would like to talk to the detective, you can. The situation spiraled further due to the female officer's failure to provide Miss Brown with a clear rationale for seizing her phone. The officer's primary responsibility should have been to inform Brown about the seizure and engage in constructive dialogue instead of needlessly intensifying the entire situation. Up to that moment, there had been a civil disagreement between Miss Brown and the officers. Notably, Brown was on the phone conversing with her mother a detective at the Chicago Police Department, who explicitly advised her daughter not to engage in conversation without legal representation. What's being seized? Following this, the officer forcefully commanded Miss Brown to end the call and surrender her phone, instructing her to relinquish it for the purpose of driving her home. We're waiting for the detective, so the detective's going to seize your phone. No one told me anything. Okay. You told me that you were about to take me home. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. So Sorry. you can hang up. You can hang up your the phone with, and I can take you home. Yep. The cops at the normal police department didn't seem to have a good reason to take Miss Brown's phone. This goes against the Fourth Amendment, which says people can't be searched or have their stuff taken away without a good reason or a warrant. In this case, the cops had neither. When Miss Brown said no to giving up her phone and asked to talk to the head detective, the cop said no, basically limiting her right to talk to the higher up. I'll talk to him first. Can he come down here? Nope, we're, we're not going to do that. So you can hang up the phone or I'm going to take the phone. That's how this is going to work. Oh, absolutely. So she said hang up the phone and they're going to take the phone because at this point I'm being hurt. Brown repeatedly questioned the officer about the confiscation of her phone. Why? Second, I want to take well, it. I'm asking you. I'm so asking if you, you a reason. So I'm not it, being rebuttal. I'm asking you a reason. At that moment, the sole explanation Miss Brown received was that an inquiry was underway concerning the fire. The fire is going to be under investigation. The insufficient evidence at that moment didn't grant the legal authority to lawfully seize or search Miss Brown's belongings. During the encounter, the officer unexpectedly presented Miss Brown with an option to converse with the detective, a move that contradicted what the officer had earlier stated as impermissible. If you would like to talk to the detective that is seizing it, you can. Do you wish to talk to him? Yeah, but... Do you want to give an interview? The officer abruptly pivoted to a divergent line of questioning, inquiring of Miss Brown her willingness to provide information to the interviewer. Are you going to talk to the detective and provide an interview? Yes or no? At that moment, it became evident that the officer aimed to cunningly steer the conversation with Miss Brown, framing it as a casual dialogue with the detective. As ludicrous and unwarranted as the scenario had already been, the officer eventually disclosed to Miss Brown that she was clueless about the justification behind confiscating her phone. Is that with or without the phone? Without the phone. The phone's being seized. Are you talking to the what detective or no? The, uh, I don't know. Miss Brown's refusal to do an interview seemed to result in potential harassment from the authorities who were considering taking her phone. The incident points out that there wasn't a valid reason for seizing her phone, especially since she wasn't arrested. Referring to the 2014 U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Riley v. California, it emphasizes that searching or taking someone's phone without a warrant during an arrest violates the Fourth Amendment. Despite the officer persistently asking for an interview, the clarification that Miss Brown's agreement to the interview didn't impact the potential seizure of her phone emphasizes that she wasn't legally required to give up her phone. So the question is, are you going to provide an interview? No. No? no. Okay, Unless go ahead hand me the phone. I have to know if my go, phone is being seized. No, hand me the phone. Upon hearing this, Miss Brown unequivocally declined to provide an interview and was swiftly encircled by all three officers stationed at the scene. The female officer made an abrupt move to seize Miss Brown's phone from her grasp, subsequently attempting to physically confine her by seizing her arms. Amidst the turmoil, 
Miss Brown was forcibly brought to the ground by the second officer, who aggressively sought to wrest her phone away as well. Nope. Go ahead and hand me the phone. Ma! Ma! Do not kick. Okay, push your legs up. Stop. 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 Relax. Stop. Relax. Stop. Relax. Mom, I'm not letting go. I promise. Relax. Mom, I'm not letting Relax. go. Relax. To make matters worse, the third officer took control of Miss Brown's legs, grabbing and restraining them. The three officers blamed that all they wanted was her phone. We just want your phone. That's it. We just okay. want your phone. Oh, no. They try to give me no protection. Miss Brown strongly fought back when the cops tried to cuff her and take her stuff without any valid reason. She didn't do anything wrong, and the officers had no grounds to detain her or take her phone. So, it was totally fair for Miss Brown to stand up for her rights, which the officers were clearly violating. If the cops had just respected her rights instead of trying to force her to comply, the whole confrontation could have been avoided. In the midst of the struggle, Miss Brown held onto her phone, refusing to give it up. The second officer used a law enforcement technique by placing hands on her neck to gain control, as seen in the body camera footage. Come on. Give me. Roll. Get me on. The situation involves a police article discussing using pressure points on the body to control or distract during arrests specifically focusing on a point near the collarbone. The article admits these tactics are meant for dealing with combative individuals, but doesn't justify their use on someone not breaking the law. In the described incident, six officers try to restrain an 18-year-old woman, Miss Brown, who did nothing wrong. Surveillance footage shows a detective watching. After handcuffing her, the detective takes her phone, ignores her request for a lawyer, and tells officers to take her to jail, raising concerns about using such tactics when no legal violations are apparent. Are you willing to provide a statement or no? What does that mean? Are you going to talk to me if we go back there or no? You are forcing me to! I'm asking you if you're going to provide a But you're a forcing me to! I can't force you to talk. You're taking my items! I'm seizing this for now, yes. Are what you, does that mean? Do you want to provide a statement? My detective, I need to talk to her. I need an attorney present. You can, you can. Okay. I need a lawyer. You can take her to jail. Alright. Take me to Where's jail? Her problem? When inquiring about her arrest, Miss Brown was met with a response from the female officer who asserted that she was being apprehended for charges of resisting arrest and aggravated battery of a police officer. You, guys you have resisting and aggravated battery of a police officer. Oh my god! Okay, I'll do the interview. In Illinois, there are two relevant laws in a recent incident involving Miss Brown. The first law, 720 ILCS 5311, describes the offense of resisting or obstructing a peace officer, firefighter, or correctional institution employee. It's considered a class of misdemeanor punishable by up to one year in jail and a fine of $2,500. The law requires a minimum 48-hour imprisonment and at least 100 hours of community service for convictions. The second law, 720 ILCS 512 3.05 defines aggravated battery of a police officer, ranging from Class X to Class III felonies with potential prison sentences of 2 to 60 years for causing significant harm or disability. Miss Brown, who was initially arrested and released without charges after two hours, filed a civil lawsuit against the arresting officers. She alleges a violation of her Fourth Amendment rights emotional distress and is seeking compensatory and punitive damages. In an interview with local media, Miss Brown and her mother shared the emotional toll of the incident, highlighting the need for accountability. The civil lawsuit is still pending, bringing attention to another case that prompts scrutiny of police conduct. Thanks for tuning into our video on two cases of corrupt cops. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated on the latest content addressing important societal issues like this. Be sure to like and share this video to spread the message of fairness and accountability in our society. Thank you for joining us in the fight for justice and honesty.